Hi everybody, my name is Mark Chong, and uh, I'm basically I, I do a lot of uh, drawing videos. And I mentioned earlier in one of my previous videos that I was getting out of um, doing drawing as as a job, as a career, because to me, drawing is just a means of communication. It's not. Um, I mean, I, I grew up making video games, and for me, I find that video games are the medium that I communicate best with. The, the things that it's the the medium for which I have the most. Um, potential to do anything decent and um, you know to do anything good and to do the most uh, to make the most of my skills because I do a lot of art I do you know the drawing I do I make music and I also do programming so video games is one of those few things that kind of brings everything that I do together it's one of those things where you know the whole mark of all trades thing really is important and um, I started I think I'm going to start doing a lot more of these uh, these kind of kitchen videos because um, if you're planning on becoming an indie video game developer or you're just wanting to be an, indep an independent um, comic book artist or anything like that, you're going to find yourself um, in a situation where you know money's going to be kind of hard. Money's going to be a little difficult to, to come by. And um, cooking for yourself is probably one of the, the cheapest ways to obtain food. You know, it's, it's going to be the cheapest way to keep yourself afloat. And um, I figured I should show everybody you know, how to some of um, you know some, some things that will help them around the, the house, help them around the kitchen, um, and be less reliant on you know the uh, the rest having to go to a restaurant to get food, or um, having to eat what is it like like microwave meals and that kind of thing. Because again, you know all of this stuff will have an effect on your energy levels later on when you're working. You know you're eating a, a lot of um, you know microwave meals and just going to McDonald's all the time. You're gonna find that that stuff. When you make your own food, it sits a lot better. It doesn't drain on your energy so much. It doesn't make you kind of feel really tired. Right now, I mean, if you're young, you're in your you know twenties, you're gonna have a lot of energy. But when you get to around you know thirty five, like I, like I am, um, you're gonna start feeling the effects of that. So very important to be able to cook your own food, and um, and so I figure um, I should you know just do this kind of as a as a demo slash test video for um, people who want to work independently. So I'm going to be sharpening. A simple kitchen knife. This thing, it's it it has seen a lot of wear and tear. I only recently got this um this sharpening stone. I got this sharpening stone from a place called Tap Phong. T A P P H O N G. It is a Vietnamese. I believe that's a Vietnamese uh, word or name um, for the store. So the thing is that it's uh, this was in uh, Toronto's Chinatown. It's a place called Tap Phong. Amazing staff there. It's a it's a family run business. The the people there, I believe, they're Vietnamese. Um, and uh, they 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 understand they have the the staff are actually pretty young you know they're they may be in their twenties they're they're my generation or you know twenties thirties um, and they all speak fluent English you know very easy to understand them and they're very helpful and they service like all of the restaurants in Toronto's Chinatown which is massive and so they you know I got this um, this 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 great uh, chopping uh, it's not uh, it's a sharp, sharpening stone I got my um, my cleaver this is my my very very nice carbon steel cleaver, um, very sharp. And this stone, the thing about these about the the cleaver, the cleaver I think was maybe around sixty odd, and the stone was seventy. And you're gonna say to yourself, my God, why is this stone so expensive? I mean, it's not. It's it's more expensive than the blade itself. Well, I'll tell you one thing about this about a good sharpening stone. And I don't. I'm not gonna. I don't even know the brand of this stone, so I'm not. I'm not like advertising. I'm just saying that this is the only stone they had at the store. But I say a good sharpening stone will make all of your knives very good knives. It has the potential to sharpen all of these blades. So that's why I think that a sharpening stone is probably going to be more important than any of the knives that you that you own. I mean, sure, you can get some of these like little laser knives which have serrations. And whatnot on them, you know, they will do the trick, and you don't have to sharpen these, right? These are these are fine. They they do the trick for the most part, but they work by kind of tearing into the food. Um, and then sometimes, you know, you just want something that is really really sharp. If you want to do any like like light like light chopping of things, um, these knives are better because the problem with a laser type knife with or like with one of these like say Wiltshire Stay Sharp these kinds of knives which have the serrations. The problem with a serrated knife is that they cut based on um, slicing movement like this. Like you have to you have to saw in, they're basically saws. These are not knives. These are saws. Um, you have to saw the food. These allow you to chop, you know, so you can chop into something. So sometimes this is why um, these blades may be a little harder to come by and they do require sharpening, um, why these are sometimes superior in certain situations. They're just different tools, you know, for different tasks. So 
to sharpen this knife, you know, I only recently got those stones, so this thing has found its way into quite a lot of disrepair. I have to, first of all, the stone needs to be wet. So I'm going to just use a clean sponge. I'm not going to use the one that I use. I have a sponge that I use for dishwashing, which has soap in it. I'm going to use a brand new sponge, which has no soap in it. And I'm going to keep this one just for my sharpening purposes. So let me just get some water on this thing. I want to thoroughly saturate the sponge. And um, the other thing that's very important is that you'll notice that I've, I've laid this stone on, it's got a little holder, and the holder, sure, it's got like little teeny rubberized feet, but if you really don't want it to slip around, then I would suggest that you fold up a, um, a towel, a paper towel, uh, no, I mean, a, like a small dish towel, and um, that will really help, you know, keep that thing in one place. That's very important that your stone does not wander around, especially when you're trying to sharpen a big cleaver. So with this, with this, um, with this sponge, I can now um, begin saturating the stone. And the thing about the stone is that the stone's gonna, when you first get it, it's gonna be very dry. And the stone is a very, it's very, it's, it's actually quite porous. It's a, quite a porous stone and it's going to, um, it's gonna sop up a lot of water. And the, the thing about the stone is that it's held, you, you, I don't know if you can actually see that depending on the light angle, but you'll see that it's like the, the water just disappearing into it. So. I like using the sponge also instead of using, say, a spray bottle or just pouring water on it because with the sponge you can wipe it down when you're adding, um, when you're trying to get the, the when you're trying to get the, the, the sharpening stone wet. Um, you know, I like it because as you wipe it down, you're also removing away any of the excess knife grit. And uh, ah, there we are. Now it's really saturating. Okay, so this this uh, sharpening stone probably ha you'll probably notice that it's actually two stones in one. It has this this very very coarse. Um, it's got a very coarse green side to it. And it has a much finer brown side. The, the brown side's down right now. And the thing is, because this knife has been in such disrepair, I'm going to be using, be using the coarse side of the uh, of the stone. And the reason, whoops, let me just turn down that. Okay. And the reason for this is that because the knife has been it's been so long since I've sharpened it, I can feel like just running my my thumb across the blade. And here's the thing: is that when you run it across, don't run it this way. You don't want to shave off your fingerprints. You want to um, have it slightly like that. And you just want to feel how it feels against your fingerprints. It doesn't take any pressure. Don't use any pressure at all because you don't want to cut yourself. You just want to feel how is that knife kind of falling into the grooves of your your, your fingerprints. And um, that is a good gauge for, you can just kind of tell when it's pretty dull. This thing is actually quite, quite dull. It can still cut, but it's just, it's very suboptimal. So, okay, so anyway, let me, uh, let's begin. So the thing is that I have to grind, what happens is with a dull blade, there's a lot of it's it's very kind of rounded. The the blade edge is rounded. There's a lot of wobbly wobbly you know parts in it. And so with this stone, this stone works by grinding things down. This is going to grind away the imperfections. It's going to grind away all those um, the bad parts. And uh, I just want to. That's a very very. It's a very thirsty stone. So I mean, I'm not editing this stuff out just so you can see just how much water the stone actually retains. And so it. You have to get to the stone to the point where it's properly saturated. Okay, now that it is saturated, um, let me get a little... Um, here we are. Yeah, let's use this. I'm going to just get a bowl like this and fill that with water. Okay. I should have thought of this earlier, but now I've... The other side's not nearly as thirsty, but yeah, just have a, a little bowl of water with which you can store your sponge in whenever you're not using it. That way it always stays nice and moist. Okay, so I'm beginning, gonna, going to begin grinding down the blade. And an important thing is that I'm not like, it's not flat like this. There is a slight inclination. And in fact, just holding it against this, this stone, as you as I'm rocking it back and forth, you can see that from the reflection of the blade that I'm rocking it. You want to rock it until you're kind of feeling, you have to find where the edge of the blade is. So you want to find where that edge is and then just reinforce that angle. You just want to stay with that, that same angle and take your time because this is a really coarse stone. It will reshape the blade and grind it down really fast, which means that if you're at the wrong angle, you'll wreck it the angle very quickly. So let's find that angle and then and the stone's already dry, so I'm going to wipe wipe it down. I'm going to take away some of that grit, and then, yeah, find. So the idea is, is that when you're pressing, right, I'm not pressing down with the handle. 
let the, you know, I may use my fingertips here to help kind of put a little bit of pressure on the blade so that the blade settles into that, that, that groove. Well, not that groove, but finds that angle. And so the blade conforms to the angle, and then I can push along and reinforce that angle. And let me move this guy out of the way just because it's going to bump into the knife. So you do need to uh, you need to clean up a bit and rearrange your countertop and make sure you have enough space to uh, to do this. And it's going to give you this kind of a nails on chalkboard feel. The reason why, and you're going to feel that there's a substantial amount of kind of resistance when you do this. That's because because of all those imperfections sticking out, they're going to start hitting up against the. Um, the imperfections are going to start hitting up against the, the, the stone, and as they catch on the stone, you're going to feel those little imperfections. And then it should, the uh, amount of resistance should actually begin to go away as you sharpen them, as they get sanded down. They go away qu quite fast, actually, with this, this stone. So use this stone, you know, sparingly. Use this side of the stone sparingly, and you don't want to over... You don't want to grind this, this blade. This blade will disappear very quickly if you're not... If you're a little too overzealous, but the idea is that you want to get to the point where you feel all the inconsistencies go away. The other thing is that um, rather than just swiping across like this, right? Rather than just swiping the blade across, um, I'm going to use my entire body like this. I can shift. I don't know. Well, if you can see this, but I can shift my whole body left and right. Looks like the camera's trying to do some kind of auto stabilization. <laughs> That's the uh, stabilization of the camera taking effect. Kind of funny. Okay, because I'm using a cell phone camera, I'm recording this on my Blackberry. So in this case, I'm actually rocking back and forth on my ankles and making my entire upper body shift along because I want to maintain that angle. I don't want the knife to start tipping around as I sharpen. So all of this movement that you're seeing is handled by the ankle movement, surprisingly, and it's causing my entire body to shift forward. So this way, you find that angle, and you, as you move, the blade angle does not change relative to the stone. You need to do this, or you'll wind up getting an inconsistent uh, sharpening. Here we are. Let's get that. Let's do it again. Now I'm doing it the other way, and I'm pulling. I'm pulling away. So the thing is, you're always pulling the metal. You're pulling the stone away from the metal as you do this. You don't require a lot of pressure. Do not use too much pressure. You don't want to... Like, you might use a lot of pressure at the beginning, but as it, as you, you know, work and things grind down, then you start to relieve the amount of pressure. And right now I'm starting to feel... Well, there's, there's almost no resistance now. Yeah, so I'm very, I'm using very, very little pressure. So let's feel that now. Oh, substantially better. Okay, so now that it's, and the thing is that you'll notice that I, I, whoops, sorry, I'll hold it closer to the camera. Um, I do this and I move all the way at the blade to see which area. Oh, I feel it's very sharp. It's quite sharp around the tip. Um, it's a lot more dull around this part of the blade. So let's just give it a few more, um, a few more swipes, and it should be okay. So the thing about sharpening blades is that it's not it's not a mechanical process. It's um, you have to be aware of what you're doing. Um, you have to find that that edge and then rock by the ankles. Use your whole ankles to rock your entire upper body forward. My everything from my waist up is um, is completely static. So I'm all right. So the thing is that I turn until I find that edge, and then once you find that edge, then you just rock on your ankles. So your entire upper body becomes a, a fixed piece. And the thing is that while you do this, you can really feel all of the, um, the, the little parts move, you know, falling away. Oh yeah, much better. So the thing is always, you know, as you do it, feel along the blade and feel, okay, this area here needs a little work. That's pretty good. Okay. That's good enough. All right, so now the thing is that you're obviously this this part of the stone will not be able to make that that thing razor sharp. It's this is not what it's for. It's just for for a, a knife that's been in major disrepair and just needs to be fixed up. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is before I transition to this side, I'm going to use my uh, my sponge 
and I'll use the um, the scrub side. I'm gonna just get rid of the. Um, there's bits of grit from the from the coarse stone. The the thing about the stone is the stone does ablate. It's that's the way it's made. It's uh, it's held together by resin. It's supposed to have a little give. It's supposed to be all those little bits of of, um, of coarse stuff. I want to get rid of that. So I'm just gonna use this sponge to get rid of the coarse pieces and um, and just wash it away. And then I'll use the other side and just give it a good a good wipe down. And now. This other part, which was sitting inside the holder, has been sitting in, in the water that's been pooling up inside the holder. And so it's pretty well saturated to, to begin with. And so the process, again, for sharpening, for continuing the sharpening, is pretty much the same. You just um, tilt the blade until you find that, that edge, and then you rock on your ankles. You use your ankle movement to, um, to perform the sharpening. And you shouldn't feel any, like, you might feel the occasional pit and bump from grit that was carried over from the other stone. So you might have to wipe things down. It's actually pretty good here. I, I, I felt like maybe two bits and that was it. So here we go. And you'll feel a little bit of resistance, right? You'll feel a little bit of resistance and as you do it, you'll feel the resistance go away. So that's how you know when you've you know done enough is, is you just, from the, the disappearing resistance, let's see. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, okay. So it's getting pretty sharp now. It's like you can really just, you'll know, you will really know. The other side though hasn't been done yet. So it's, there's a lot of potential for improvement here. So always, uh, I catch myself, right? Using my arms to, to sharpen. Don't use your arms, use your ankles. And that way your whole body will be much more consistent and it will, you'll get the job done a lot faster. It's an unusual movement, but you know, this kind of follows the same principle that I do, that I have when I, um, when I draw. When I draw, I say, you know, use your entire shoulder and arm, like use your elbow and your wrist when you're drawing, don't draw with your fingertips. So it follows pretty much the same principle in that if you want a consistent line, you use your, you know, use a greater part of your body and you, you fix down the small movements, you fix down your wrist and your, Let me just properly saturate that sponge. So, yeah. so the thing is, I'm just pushing down on the sponge, just blow it up, get rid of all the bubbles. Now the sponge is like soaking. Great. And plus, this little towel really um, takes care of any of the nasty spills and whatnot. It just means you don't make a mess of your countertop. It's pretty simple. It's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a very methodical process. It's a methodical process. It's actually quite relaxing. I really enjoy, you know, the feeling of, oh, wow, this blade's like really bad. Running it over this stone and then suddenly kind of seeing, feeling the change and, and having a knife that, that cuts really, really nicely. And you'll really appreciate it when you start um, cutting up those vegetables later on. You'll really begin to appreciate when, you know, the, the blade's not hanging in the vegetable. It's not, you don't have to face a lot of resistance. And surprisingly, um, the sharper the, the sharper the knife, I feel the safer the knife. The reason for this is that if the knife is not sharp, it tends to meet a lot of resistance when you're cutting things and you tend to apply a lot of excess pressure. And then when the knife finally does reach that breaking point and actually starts cutting through the, the stuff, it will surprise you and you wind up. Uh, that's why a lot of accidents happen is because your knife is just not doing what you want it to do. You know, you put in too much pressure, you wind up manhandling the blade. And that's just, um, that's a recipe for disaster and a, and a pretty nasty cut that's going to itch and be a pain in the ass way down the road and give you a nice little scar. So um, so I say have your knives nice and sharp and, um, you know, don't ever, uh, don't apply too much pressure to them when you're cutting things. It's, uh, it's, it's not safe. It's not safe and uh, and the thing is, you want to be able you you want to have good memories of cooking. You want to have good memories of of preparing your own food when you're in an independent, right? You're in it for the long haul. So um, let's see. Yeah, there we go. I think that's about that's probably good enough. Yeah, I don't I don't feel anything. So yeah, that's the thing is that at, at when you stop feeling any resistance when you're sharpening, you're pretty much oh that's that's quite good. Oh, that's very good. So that's what I mean. It's, it's just you sharpen and you feel it. You know, there's an optimal point. At some point, you know, you you don't have to. I think I'm probably overdoing it. Let me just. 
So the thing is, that, you know, at some point when you just kind of reach the the, the diminishing returns, I mean, the thing is going to get dull again when you sharpen it. So you don't have to like make it razor sharp or anything, but you know, sharp enough that it doesn't have any um, big lumps and bumps in it. And um, yeah, so I just dry that thing off, and then take a paper towel and fold it up. This is actually only half a paper towel. Fold it again, and this is just to deburr it, which is to get rid of that thin layer of metal foil that is the result of sharpening. And you can really see it. It's just this <laughs> this folded up, this very tightly folded dry paper towel. It's it's really doing a number on it. So yeah, it, and it cuts very cleanly, it cuts very nicely. So that's the joy of sharpening a knife, is that when it does what you want it to do, it's a good tool, it's now a reliable tool, I can rely on it again. It wasn't, it was very dull earlier. Wow. It's good, you know, it's uh... So yeah, um, so once again, the stone that I got came from a store called Top Fung in Chinatown. They, they sell like really, really big industrial cookware for um, for all the Chinese restaurants, all the Asian restaurants in uh, in Toronto, uh, if you're in Toronto, definitely do check them out. And um, and like I say, they they're very friendly to English speakers. I myself, although I'm Asian genetically or by descent, I am only an English speaker, and they treated me very very well, and uh, and were very very helpful in terms of getting me both a good cleaver and a good stone. I looked all over the city to try to find stones like this, and that was the only place I had them, so great place to visit. So, alright, thanks for watching this video, and if you want to see more like this, uh, let me know in the comments.